Hello and welcome to Bite Spread and Barbecue. Today we're going to take a quick tour of Kunbuntu 22.04 long term support. Uh, recently, I was doing a little bit of tinkering on my Linux hard drive, and I was probably doing some things I shouldn't do, corrupted the boot sector, and couldn't restart my computer. So it gave me the opportunity to do a clean install, completely wipe the hard drive, and install Kubuntu 22.04. If you find these videos of mine helpful, please subscribe down below. It helps me out with YouTube if you click the subscribe button. So let's take a quick tour of Kubuntu 22.04. What I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that have changed in a quick little tour and some very subtle changes I made. Basically, what you're going to be seeing is a clean install right out of the box, right down to the wallpaper and the icons that are present. Um, one of the very first things that has changed with Kubuntu uh, or is new is that they now have, if you take the meta key and press W, it brings up um, a screen that allows you to add additional desktops if you want to, and it shows you every application that is currently running, and you can drag them to the different desktops. Now, generally, I don't need a whole lot of desktops with the things that I... The other things that are present, you can see on the background of this uh, computer that the wallpaper that's present I, I really like this wallpaper I think that it shows that it is uh, bright colorful I didn't even change the default wallpaper I left it as it is um, and I thought that the, the aesthetically that it was very very pleasing um, we're going to talk about the particular system and this is Kubuntu as I said 22.04 uh, and it shows you that it's using KDE Plasma version 5.24.4. Uh, this is the latest version of KDE. If you're a true novice, um, Linux comes with different graphical interfaces. The, one of the most common is GNOME. The, another common one is KDE. I like the KDE interface. I think it's fresh. I think it's easy to use. Um, and it's uh, easy to get around in. Uh, GNOME is also a very nice interface, but I prefer to work with the KDE, and that's what you're seeing here today. You will notice on the system information, one of the things I did change are the graphic drivers. Um, it does install right out of the box, regardless of whatever graphics card you have. However, I do have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you want to take advantage of a specific higher power graphics card that's in your system, you do have to download individual drivers and use them on your system. So one of the things I did change after I installed this to the hard drive was I did go and search out the NVIDIA drivers. Um, they're easy to find and NVIDIA supplies them. And it makes a big difference if you're doing any kind of gaming or any type of um, high graphics performance software on your computer. So you can see that it actually is identifying my NVIDIA graphics card properly with the amount of information that's present. This system information section um, is also very in-depth now. Uh, even going into just the appearance here, um, I'm currently using the Breeze Dark theme. Um, uh, dark themes are very popular on computers right now, but you can switch. Breeze is the default one that comes with Kubuntu. Um, I do like the Breeze system, and I am using the dark theme to give you this black background here. It also, you can change the application look and feel. You can change the plasma style that you like on that. You can even go down and change individually highlighted covers within this. You can also change your uh, Windows decorations. Now, currently, this kind of has what looks like a, an old Windows decoration in the upper right-hand corner of um, your various applications that are over. There are tons of these that are available. You can put them on the left-hand side. You can make it look like a Mac if you like. You can find some really funky ones online to totally change the difference. You'll also see here that I'm currently using the Breeze Dark icons that fit with the theme. I like the candy icons that give you a really neat neon appearance on a dark theme. However, for whatever reason, they didn't see fit to make icons that go on the word processing 
ribbon bars. So I don't use that one primarily, although I really like the look of it and it does give you a bright sort of snap to the black theme. So this is the way that I've altered the appearance on mine. If you go down through system information, there is just a plethora of different settings and everything that you can do here. Um, and you can see if we go into driver uh, management here, it's going to ask me first for my system password. And it's going to show you that I have selected an NVIDIA driver here and that it's proprietary and it's the recommended one for my system. And it's going to show you those drivers. So we're just going to exit out of there. Uh, printers are very easily detected during installation. I've not had any problems with it detecting whatever printer you happen to have installed. Um, and as I said, the about system we've already seen here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit here about um, the default software that comes with the system. Um, Firefox ships as the default web browser, and Discover is actually like an app store. If you're used to a smartphone um, that has an app store, um, either Apple or Android, you can see that this is very similar. Linux being open sourced, all the applications are also open source on um, Linux. And you can get almost any type of application you want. This is all free, it's all legal, and it has for example, if you wanted to use Photoshop but didn't want to lay out several hundred dollars for Photoshop, this comes with GIMP or you can install GIMP, which is a graphics program that looks and feels very much like Photoshop and has all of that same capability that Photoshop has. Um, and this is all open source. And as you can see, there's just tons and tons of software and you can break it down by the different, the different groupings. I have installed a couple of programs that didn't come with the default. I did put Google Chrome on. Firefox, as I said, ships with it. I also use Brave. I like the security of the Brave browser and I use that primarily. Um, and I put that on. Your file folders, it looks very much like anything that you're used to. Um, right now, I actually have everything showing there. But you can see that these file folders look almost like any type of GUI interface that you're used to. And you can break it down. Um, and the other thing that is nice about this is that it does, does come with an Office suite. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with LibreOffice, but LibreOffice um, by default comes with a program that reads and writes Excel, reads and writes PowerPoint, reads and writes Word documents. You can download a component for it that reads and writes access databases as well. It has its own proprietary format, but it can work with any of these other formats. Um, my one son used it all the way through college uh, without any difficulties. Uh, and again, it's free and open source. And if we open up the writer, you can see that this looks very much like Word. Anybody who has ever used Microsoft Word should be able to use this. And it looks very, very familiar. Um, the other thing uh, that we want to talk about here are a few different changes that I made just to slightly alter the appearance. By default, the icons on KDE are in the lower left-hand corner, much like they are in Windows 10. Um, however, if we go into the edit mode here, you can see that I put spacers on both sides of the icon taskbar at the base. This moves the icons to the middle. It gives it a little bit more modern appearance. Mac has always done this with the icons in the center. Windows recently in version 11 has moved them to the center. And I just like the look of it being in the center a little bit more. So I put the spacers on both sides here. Um, it really is the only thing that I have changed um, on my system um, to, to, from the default install, other than changing to the dark theme um, and installing a few software products. I also installed Lutris because I like to game and I play quite a few um, Blizzard games. Um, if, if you're familiar with Lutris, uh, it's a really easy application to use. If you're not, it's an application you download from the internet and then it has little scripts from its site that set up programs that are typically used to game under um, 
Windows, but it'll set them up to run on Linux and it does all the configuration for you. You don't have to do anything. It installs it here and you would just click on this big icon here and hit play and all of a sudden you're off to Blizzard and everything works seamlessly. The other thing that I installed is actually Steam. Um, Steam comes for Linux uh, with um, a um, an interface that's called Proton. Um, the Proton interface allows you to um, play Windows games that you've purchased under Steam. I have not had any difficulties, but a lot of the Windows games I play on Steam are older games that I play with family and friends, um, and I've not had any issues. They all seem to run well. Uh, Linux does have a native version of Steam that you get from Discovery, um, and then it has an option when you're playing a Windows game to click on the Proton, and it seems to make the games work seamlessly. I've not had any difficulties. There are native Linux games under Steam as well. So that's a quick little tour. Uh, not much else to tell you. All the applications work very similar. Um, I'm sure that you're well acquainted with we're using Chrome, probably even Thunderbird, which is the default mail program that ships with that. But it is a very clean, nice looking interface. So thanks for coming along with this tour. If you found it enjoyable, just click subscribe below. And I appreciate the support. Thanks, bye.